next video I'll show you how to make building instructions with Bricklink or Lego Studio. I'll show you how I made this model PDF building instructions and if you watch this video you will learn how to do it yourself and share all your Mindstorms models online. Let's start with a new document and then um, import um, a palette. You do this by going to config for some reason and then um, you can import a set in studio i imported the mercedes-benz rox uh, it's a set i have and it's a set i'm using the wheels from and this greatly reduces the master palette to some useful bricks for this race car build um, the way to start this build off is um, from from the center actually and then we're going to build both rear motors around it i'm going to start by building one side and then um, make that into a sub model that i can easily um, mirror and copy over to the other side um, and as you can see on the right there uh, as i build the model i try to think in steps that people will be actually able to use while building if i do this right away while um, clicking everything together here i will have much less work in a later phase when going over the layout of each building instruction page. So there you go is another step. I use Ctrl T for adding more steps and I use the search box a lot there on the left side for finding new bricks. As you can see this one is ARM50 so it's, it's a shortcut that allows me to find lift arms of a certain length quite quickly in the, um, in the, um, between the building blocks in the pallet. So now we're starting with the motor assembly. I'm you don't see it but at the same time while I'll build while I'm building this I have the model in my hand and I try to figure out what um, a reasonable way is in which you can assemble this model um, that you don't have to bend uh, plastic parts like they cannot be bent so I try to build it up in layers so arm 5 gives me a 5 long lift arm and that'll be about enough for this step so I'm adding another step um, and it's time for the big motor um, I'm looking for the motor in the master pallet by typing EV3 there um, and Pushing it into place here. When you build a real model, it's actually easier to add a big gear and a six long axle before you click the motor together. Um, however, when making building instructions, it's nice to have the motor in place, then add the gear and the axle, and after that, create a sub model. So now, um, when you go to the pages you can see you the, the user of the building instructions will be first instructed to build the big motor and the axle as a sub model and then snap it together however for positioning the bricks in space sometimes you have to flip around uh, some orders so x if you type X and a certain length, you get axles, much like when you type arm and a certain length, it's enough for the search box to find lift arms. 
I'm looking here for this axle connector so whenever I don't know the name of a part but I know it will fit an axle I type X and then scroll through all parts okay here is another lift arm this one is 13 here I can see that my gears aren't well aligned so I select every block and press the T key for transform the T key for um, dragging my parts into place uh, when I'm dragging them with the T key I can make sure that they are moved along a single axis in small steps and it's very nice for precise positioning now let's decide what to build next it's going to be another lift arm by using um, the pallet from a specific set, in this case the Mercedes Benz Arox. I'm also making sure that the um, style and the color palette of the whole model is um, somewhat coherent. And now it's time to add um, some kind of mounting bracket on the back of the motor here that will later support the EV3 brain. As you can see, I press the C key for clone. I use that a lot if um, there is a part that I've already used before and I just want an, another copy of that. I just press C, clone, select the part and make a copy of it. trying to play around with the color palette here, deciding what would look nice. Um, let's build on and then depending on the parts, on the color of the other parts, decide what the whole palette will be here. So now it's time for a little pin, the blue pin, the blue pin with the cross, here it is. Now it's time for a for long axle. X4. And here I'm looking for this part that is a tree long beam with the bush on the side. Um, and I know it's in the EV3 Mindstorm set, so I'm just switching the pallet to that set and grabbing it from there. Okay, this will support the brain. And I'm using, yeah, just arranging uh, my steps right. Press T to drag it in place. So I cloned that pin and putting it in place here behind the motor. I want to make sure that everything is um, in in the is modeled in one side. So when I make it into a sub model and copy it, that I don't have to um, adjust and adjust to sub model the mirror and the original, so I really am very careful here when building one side. Let's see if this is already mirrorable. Probably need some more. Yeah, so I'm going to select all parts and then with Control pressed. I'm going to click the parts that I don't want mirrored to remove them from the selection. So select all parts with control. I remove all parts that I don't want mirrored. 
Then uh, one last check. I think uh, this is about right. Um, for a submodel. Create the submodel. I don't usually give my submodels names because they don't seem to help much. Otherwise, when building, they don't uh, come back in building instructions. Okay, so this is, as you can see here, this is something that makes a studio very powerful. Um, the possibility for mirroring submodels. Um, it's actually very smart when you come to think of it, because not every part in um, not every Lego part is mirrorable, um, or is. Um, for instance, some panels need to have different versions um, if you want to build a mirror. And the uh, mirroring algorithm in Studio is really, really smart. It can do all of that while still uh, maintaining connections to the right bricks. Okay, solidifying the rear motor assembly here. And now I'm going to mount the front motor and I think I've been too fast with the 5x7 frame there I think it's going to have to go and that the seven long beams that are on the bottom are one of the last beams that should go on the model they will connect the front part and the rear part of the model so I'm going to go inside each uh, submodel for the left and right motor and remove the um, beams and the pins that are there. The frame is now not really connected but it's a good basis to start the front assembly so I'll just leave it there and start um, building my front assembly and the steering motor on that frame. Okay, looking up some uh, pins here again. And let's start building the front wheel assembly with the steering motor. Three black ones and a blue one. You can also select the blue pin in the sidebar, then press C for clone, rotate it in place with the arrow keys and add it. Now some five length arms. There they go, and some more black pins. I am checking my model at the moment to make sure that they are in exactly the right place. Pressing C for clone and there uh, are my black pins, there is another one here. Um, now for some lift arms I'm counting the number of holes here on the real model to make sure that I have the right lift arm I think it's a 9 um, that looks rather short it's probably an 11 anyway ok, not a white one the grey one now I need this kind of double pin connector thing i always forget its name so i type pin in the search box and then cloning some regular black pins here it's time for the motor so i went into that sub assembly press ctrl c ctrl v for copying the motor that's much faster than looking it up again in the uh, parts palette now i'm hiding um, the back side here um, and it gives me access to the backside of the front wheel assembly where I still need to stick in some pins and some five length arms. So select the black pin, press C for clone and snap them into place. Time for a new step. And um, rearranging some materials there. I'm cloning the five length beam here. This is too high, it should go 
one low lower checking the real model yes that's it that's where it should go and another one uh, cloning the black pins here and now it's time for the front uh, wheel uh, rack the linking pin system so add another step again this will make the building instructions easier later on I'm looking for arm 5 because I'm looking for a 3x5 arm it's a dark grey one let's clone some black uh, pins there and now let's look for a big arm oops forgot no no it's I pressed Ctrl T in time so it's nicely in a new step I have to align it well yes that's it about four holes left on the left side there and um, now it's time for a uh, six long axle here to insert and one of these double pin uh, thingies Okay, and now the real lift arm. I, I think it's weird that in studio beams are called lift arms, but well, I learned to live with it. Um, I think uh, the real lift arms are these um, black things here with uh, a cross axle connector and um, something that links to another arm. That's for me the definition of a real lift arm. But anyway, um, the good thing is that you can also find it under the arm search box. Now let's um, add the wheel sub-assembly here. So I'm going to do this once again um, and then copy it over. Looking for a tire, rotating the tire in place still yes that's the way it should be rotated it doesn't go on all the way so i'm going to use the t key again to transform and i'm cloning the bush there that's yes splitting it up in two steps and i'm going to make a sub model and copy that over to the other side copy and mirror there we go that's the magic of brickling studio again rearranging the steps and adding two new beams so it's a proper steering mechanism we're almost ready with the front wheel assembly now I need this one length beam uh, it seems to be called pin connector one in the palette um, I just scroll down until I found it Okay, let's uh, rearrange some stuff here, and I think I'm ready to build this all into a sub-model. Oh yeah, I forgot a few more black pins to add here, to make sure that um, in the end it's only a matter of adding these uh, seven long beams and snapping it all together. I want them to be added uh, right at the beginning of my sub-model here. around create submodel this will be the front wheel assembly and then we're going to show the rest of the model and put the top right button over there and now add a new step for adding the beams or lift arms that fix the whole assembly in place here there we go starting to look uh, like a race car more and more let's uh, finish up the support for the brain the EV3 brick and uh, put that brick in place takes two black pin and one of these uh, 
Yeah, double pin around the bend kind of bricks. We arrange uh, that into a submodel so it's easy for the builder to connect that. Four more pins there on the back, and now this is a nice uh, EV3 brick support. Um, uh, it might be nice to put the back wheels in place first before adding the brick. So you now let's make the back wheel assembly there with some bushes, a copy of that wheel. Control C, Control V, drag it in place with the T shortcut, uh, clone that bush and put it over there on the other side. So that is a nice back wheel assembly, create it into a submodel and drag it in place. Now the cool thing about Studio is that when you copy a submodel it also copies the steps so um, it's really easy to create building instructions from that. Okay, we have our four wheel car now. We're almost there. Um, finishing up by adding the brain. I'm uh, picking the brain from the master palette here by typing EV3 and then I get all EV3 electronics. Um, I'm not putting a rechargeable battery in the brain, but there is space in the model to put one in if you like to. Um, and then it's time to finish the model with um, the spoiler and the hood. I'm just speeding things up here um, because you get the gist of how to model in studio by now, I think. It's just a matter of um, being smart with uh, submodels and making sure that you add new steps in time so not too many Lego parts are bunched up in a single step and it's hard to um, find out what goes first and what goes uh, later when making these building instructions. Here's another case of where I'm inserting parts in not exactly the way you, you build it for the building instructions but it helps me position the parts in space and making maximum use of the automatic snapping of studio um, here I'm making the hood I think actually there with the two length beam that was a bad construction um, I think it's much better to have a five length uh, beam in there and uh, make it more sturdy uh, and I have updated building instructions on my Patreon side um, where I um, removed all these um, or at least I updated all these um, small mistakes in the building instructions so you have a more solid model than the model I was recording here to show, to show you how I model. Looking for the panels here, um, importing them from the UV3 palette. It's uh, much easier to find things in there than in the master palette. Oops. This is the rotate tool. What you do is uh, you select uh, the pin that the first pin that should rotate and then all the parts that are connected to that pin will rotate with it and you can press R to go in uh, to rotate um, and then the last thing that um, I do when I make building instructions is um, auto generate the page and then go over every page to make sure that the parts uh, you're adding are visible and the model rotation is um, is right and everything fits on the page so every single page 
take some time to review and edit and um, you can sw see I'm switching forward and backward between the step editor and the page design um, to make sure that um, the steps are in a logical order and it's actually physically possible to assemble the model see it's a lot of rotating zooming rearranging the order of the bricks but um, also it's not that much work since that I took the build order already into account when creating the model in 3d so now it's just uh, mostly a matter of uh, laying out the pages when um, arranging the rotations I try to make sure that there are as few rotations as possible to make to keep things from being confused confusing but then on the other hand um, I personally think that many of the Lego building instructions are too easy and on some technic sets I'd love to have a bit more of a challenge so I'm also making my building instructions not really baby level. You really have to watch carefully and engage your brains to build these models. Okay. Here we there, finishing up, rearranging some parts uh, so they are in the right order and the right level of the submodel. This one was just a complete sub-assembly and it didn't have any steps so I'm just inserting steps here uh, so they then show up on separate pages. The model is nearly done, just uh, finishing up um, the last pages here. Um, I hope you I've enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about um, modeling in studio uh, and I hope this has helped you to build uh, your own building instructions and share more uh, models uh, online. Um, the full PDF is uh, downloadable from uh, my Patreon site and I will also export uh, PNG uh, so that you can uh, see on my website um, and anyway um, even if you don't uh, use any building instructions uh, it'd be nice if you'd support me on Patreon or maybe uh, buy a funny t-shirt from my web store and uh, share the love for Mindstorms. Hope to see you again on my channel. Bye bye.